I just, I, I gotta say this right off the back, okay? I know my last video, my last game reaction against the Canucks 4-0 loss, it was brutal. And I went really in hard on the coaching, the management. I went in on the team in general, a lot of the defense and whatnot. And although the Jets come out and win 5-2 in the back-to-backs against the Canucks after the 4-0 shutout, I just gotta say right now, there was a lot of good in this game. And I'm, I'm sorry I'm a pessimistic fan, but I am. And I've gotta still point out negatives. And I still, there were elements of this game where I didn't like. But I'm not going to, there's a lot of good to talk about in this game before the bad. And we're going to start off with the good. Because there was, like I said, a lot of good in this game. Starting off, Appleton is just, this kid is growing into be one of the best late round Jets picks that Jets have had in a long time. Hell, even one of the better late round picks in the league when you look at how good he's starting to develop. Coming in, he wins the Rookie AHL, rookie AHL of the Year award. Fantastic player in the AHL. He comes into the NHL, starts developing his game more defensively, he looks like more of a dynamic Andrew Kopp, and then now this season he's just shown how good he really is. He's setting his career high so far in goals this season already, looking super dynamic in every game in my opinion, improving his offensive skill set so much that it's just the difference is night and day between games in my opinion on when Appleton has really started to develop his scoring touch, and he's just looking really, really good, and I'm, not, I'm just going to say it right out here, I think Appleton has potential to push into the top six and be a contributing good top six winger. I think that really could happen in his career. I think the Jets keeping him is going to be a must-have, and I don't even want to see people talking about Vegas, uh, excuse me, Seattle expansion, stuff like that, because Appleton, I feel like, is going to be a really good key contributing part of this club moving forward, and it's really important to keep him happy and keep him signed, and just see how much he gets better as the season goes on, because although Lowry and Kopp are going to be having upcoming contract negotiations, Appleton is going to be a guy I think the Jets need to really focus on, and if it really has to, come push to shove, let Andrew Kopp go and promote at Mason Appleton, because Appleton's game is just the growing into such a blossoming and into such a great dynamic NHL forward and his speed is amazing I love watching this kid play um and I he just is so good. And I also want to talk about that Shifley, Stastny, Wheeler line. Wheeler having three points tonight. Stastny getting a goal. They just played fantastic. At first, I wasn't a big fan of this because, you know, I just I like seeing Stastny potentially moving into that second line center slot. I think he has good chemistry with Kyle Connor and Nikolai Ehlers as well. They've shown to have some good play from past games. But this was just amazing. Like, if this is... Paul Stastny costs us, like, literally nothing to bring in. And he has been just such a good player for us. He may not have the highest point total on the team, but he wins wins face-off. He wins battles in the border, boards. He hits. He plays a really good type of physical hockey. He's a very big presence down the center of the ice. He's exactly what the Jets have been needing. And to have him potentially be a dynamic forward for the Jets that can play center and the wing efficiently, that's huge for the club moving forward. And I really, really love his play start of this season. And it's just, it's just such a good get. A lot of people thought that Stastny was, you know, after that last season in Vegas on the decline, and he probably still is. But when you look at his game and the little things he does right and what Winnipeg paid to bring him in on an expiring contract, it's a fantastic get and another great sh trade by Kevin Dayoff just to add to his resume of great trades he's made with the Winnipeg Jets. A lot of people questioned it. I never did. I thought it was a fantastic move from the moment I saw it break the night before on Twitter and I'm still happy that that trade went through. I love that we have that guy back and I'm just happy he's a Winnipeg Jet because he is fantastic with this team and he just really solidifies that top six as really deadly as it is. And that really gets down to the fact that the entire top six. In my opinion, in the first period, they looked a little shaken, and I thought that actually the bottom uh, six pairings, excuse me, pairings, bottom three, the two lines of the Jets out forward core were the better players in that first period, but when this, the game went on, all four lines were just really rolling out. The fourth line obviously not doing much because of the fact that Paul Maurice just refuses to play them, but that third line, second line, and first line, they're that, that, that just so good. The top nine of the Winnipeg Jets is almost unmatched, I feel like, in the league with how much skill and how every player just fits the need of a forward in a top nine perfectly. Lowry's a hard-hitting guy who plays the bottom six very well. Same with Appleton and Kopp. Both of those, all three of those guys have offensive upside and up abilities. The second line could be a first line on half of the NHL clubs. And the first line, again, is just a fantastic line with dynamic puck moving and Blake Wheeler just looking like if, the Blake Wheeler of old. Like, he's such a good power play asset that I know an $8 million contract in the next, like, what, four years is going to be a little bit of a sting as his 5-on-5s five continues to decline, but the man could probably still put up 60 points in the power play in a full 82-game season, even at 36, I feel like. He's so dynamic with the puck on the power
power play. It's almost unmatched in skill compared to anyone else in the league and where he sits in the office. Alex Edler tonight was just assigned with lying down, blocking anything in front of the lane, in front of the net, taking up the crease for any pass. And Wheeler still finds a way to throw out an amazing feed to Connor, and he hesitates and puts that goal in. He just played fantastic, and that power play looks so good. He is the captain. There's a reason why he is. I know I've criticized him in the past. There's still elements of things like that that I'm still not sure with in the locker room, but that doesn't matter when you have a guy that's playing this consistent at that age. You know, I yeah, I might not like the contract, but Wick Wheeler is starting to look really, really good, and I haven't really talked about him that much compared to others, but he is really improving from where he was, where I was criti criticizing him more at the start of that season in the midway part so far. This is what we've played. He's looked a lot better, a lot more poised, and I'm really excited to see if he continues that play up and how just better and how he'll look after a full shortened season with the Jets this year. I'm looking very forward to seeing what it comes down to. Um, also talking about another guy who I haven't even got into is Kyle Connor. Kyle Kerner, Connor today actually makes himself a third in the league from U.S. born players for goals scored since 2017, only behind Matthews and Patrick Kane. That's a very good, very good company to be kept in, especially for a guy as underrated as he is, and on such an affordable contract for the next six, what, eight years or seven years or whatever it is. It's just showing how good he is, showing how great of a contract that is. This Kyle Connor contract, I feel like, is going to be looked like in the next couple of years as good as the Shifley contract has been for the last six years. Like, I really agree, really, really agree with that and think that. I think that he's going to just show how valuable he is to the club and how fantastic he is. He's one of the best goal scorers in the NHL. I know I'm a Patrick Liney homer, and I still love Patrick Liney, and I still hate that trade because I miss my favorite player. Doesn't matter because Kyle Connor is still going to be putting up goals the way he is, and it's just so dynamic and interesting to see how his game is really blossoming on the power play as well. That line is no longer there as that one time option and that main goal scoring ability on the power play. He looks so much more dynamic on the power play, the entire power play does. I was going to really start this video off hammering the power play because I hated that power play, that first power play in the first period. The best breakout pass we saw from both units came from Lauren Bossois, but the second period and third period, the power play looked like it was reshot in the leg with steroids and a completely new an identity to the team from what we saw in that first and that was really the theme for almost this entire game the first period like we've seen in so many first periods for the Winnipeg Jets was crap in my opinion it really wasn't that good Nathan Beaulieu looked like shit the defense looked like shit and really was mis miscommunicating a lot they couldn't get the puck to the neutral zone they were turning it over a lot and they just didn't have a lot of good pressure I felt like in that first period although they had goals still and they were scoring and leading there was a lot of elements of the game I wasn't happy with as a fan and how I thought that it would continue on but that second and third all those problems were taken away the game was wide open for both clubs even though Vancouver couldn't capitalize really and when they did capitalize that's one that's one thing I want to talk about and that's the big negative I feel like I took from this game and it's just something that I've been saying as well but it's not as it's been, been a massive effect to this game but it's still a problem I want to talk about and that's this this lazy passive defensive style that the Winnipeg Jets play they're horrible with it both the goals that Vancouver scored they were really just because the Jets were really passive and not putting on any four check on any of the shots. They were leaving guys way too open on five on five, and it really killed them. And I just want to see the Jets be more of an aggressive style of defense. I hate this passive, really, this crap that they do. Um, I know it's mostly because of the way that the player skill level is and whatnot, but I just want to see them be more aggressive with their defensive strategy. And I, that's just my big takeaway from that game is the defense, again, although it looked improved, I didn't like their overall play because of the way that the scheme was. And that's just my, again, a, a, a gripe I have with coaching, my opinion on it. But other than that, I really like the game. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something I never thought I would say. Nathan Bully was bad tonight, but he was improved. And it's because he was playing third-line minutes and not top-line minutes. When you have a guy that's meant to play that third pairing role and you give him top line minutes, he's going to suck, and that's why he sucked. He still didn't look very good and missed, had a lot of times where he was uh, missing his assignments, losing his assignments in the play, but I will say that I will give credit to where credit's due. He played a better game, in my opinion. He still wasn't great, but a better game from what I would like to see. I still I want to see Stanley in there. I still want to see some changes with him being pulled out, but I'll give credit to where credit is due. It was a better game, even though it still wasn't that great of a game. All that being said, I really, really like the way the Winnipeg Jets played this game after the second and third. First period, not so much, but there was improvement, and that's all you can really ask for as a Jets fan is hoping for improvement. And it's all we've really seen from this club so far this season is a really bad first, gets followed by a really dynamic second and third period. But other than that, this was an interesting two-game series with the Vancouver Canucks. That first game with 4-0 just looked like crap, a crap team that I didn't really see any game positive from. Although they had good offensive pressure, it just... 
I didn't like that game at all, and I've seen elements of that game, what we saw in that game, sprinkled throughout the season, and it was just a compilation, of my point, of a bunch of different bad type of styles of play and players, but not putting on a poor performance. This game was obviously much better. The score sheet proves that. There was a lot of good play to talk about, a lot of stuff to be excited for moving forward with the way the Lions look offensively, and... I think it's going to be an interesting next couple of weeks for the Jets. I really think that although the defense is still a massive weak spot, I'm going to be making videos talking about how they can improve that defense in the next coming weeks. And stay tuned for that, so subscribe if you haven't already. But nonetheless, I'm very excited to see what the next couple of weeks are going to look like for the Winnipeg Jets moving forward. But let me know all your thoughts down about this game and these two game series against the Vancouver Canucks. The bad, the good. Let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below as always. If you're a fan of hockey, regardless of the team you root for, definitely consider dropping a subscription as we are on that road to 1K subscribers. And I do appreciate all the support you guys give the channel. It's been insane, and I love it and I'm really appreciative for it, so thank you so much for that. Turn on notifications if you haven't already. Follow my Twitter, which is down in the description below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, love, and positivity as always. Go Jets, go!